But joining me now from our Tel Aviv studio to discuss the latest French ultimatum is Reserve Colonel Miri Eisen, a former advisor to the Prime Minister and government spokeswoman. Miri? Good afternoon, Aria. Good afternoon. Well, Israel has downplayed this proposal and the Palestinians obviously welcomed it. Would you say this is a sort of a lose-lose situation for Israel? So the Palestinians get what they want anyway. Well, at the end of the day, the Palestinians have not gotten what they want, Aria. And every once in a while, I feel like we need to remind ourselves that it's 2016 and we are growing stronger. And we have just had a wonderful report from the OECD and the Israeli economy grows. And at the end, for the Palestinians, they haven't resolved it. So with all of their talking about imposing it upon us, they have not managed to do so. And I don't think that they'll manage to do so through this French initiative either. There is a lot of rhetoric and I would agree with you that when it comes to rhetoric, we I feel that we lose often mm -hmm. and that we're placed in situations where we're the ones that are the refuseniks. And I don't like that situation. I don't like being the ones that are constantly saying no. Well, as a former spokeswoman, how, would, how do you think Israel should react to this? Well, one of the things that I like and the way that we can react is let's be positive as opposed to negative in the sense, and I heard the Prime Minister in the full statement, I think that one of the things that we do is we only take portions of it. And first of all, we welcome the idea of arriving at a resolution with the Palestinians, and we think that we should do so face to face, and we think that it's something that should be continued to do. It's interesting that the Americans respond in this way today, and everybody's poo-pooing the way the Americans said that. Mm -hmm. Why not? We do respond. We are interested. This isn't about the international community imposing it upon Israel. It's about Israel and the Palestinians jointly sitting down together. They've refused to do so for many years. But by our standing up and immediately saying no, what everybody hears is only our refusal and not that context of the Palestinians not willing to come to the table, not willing to compromise. And I really do think that it's a question of the way that we would frame it. And we could, I think, do better. Well, you know, there's a threat that if uh, the peace talks aren't progressing, that the French will declare recognition for Palestine. What are the ramifications of that? Well, they wouldn't be the first. And if somebody wants to go and bring up and go online now and bring up their 134 countries that already recognize Palestine as a country, that isn't something that I wake up today and say in 2016 it's any different. In 2012, the United Nations recognized Palestine as a, a type of country. So when we're talking, when we already have so many countries in the world that do so, not that I would be happy, but it's another one. Other European countries have spoken about it, northern Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm have gone that way. There's a big difference here. And that's the difference between parliaments, between the what I call the popular vote, and between governments, between the ones who are making policy. Because when we talk policy, I think that governments very much understand, even if they don't agree, they understand Israel's position. They understand the fact that there are two sides to the issues here and that it's not just about imposing it upon Israel. When you have a rhetoric that the people in France know, that the state of France have recognized Palestine, you're already at a stage where I can just see the implications on tourism to Israel, on day-to-day -day life to Israel. From a country like France, that's a very big statement. Hasn't happened in, let's say, the UK or in Germany and other large countries, which are very important in the way that they look at Israel. It already has started happening for example, in Sweden, where the parliaments have already recognized Palestine as a country. Well, there's those who are saying that the French are just trying to spark some kind of dialogue that's long overdue, and perhaps it's, it's better than nothing at all. Maybe they're right. Maybe we need a good kick to get us back to the peace table. Hey, there, on that one, you're going to have a lot of differing opinions there, Arie. Um, I want us to get back to the table. Mm -hmm. I want us to jointly get back to the table. It takes two to tango. And I really think that Israel is not the one right now that's saying no to going back to the table. The question is about the conditions when you come back to that mm -hmm. table. And I'm going to make a statement here in a very strong kind of security kind of mode. If you go back to the table, Arie, and you sit down and negotiate, and you fail again, are we all ready to fail again? So it isn't just a question of let's all run back and get to that table. We want to get to a table and succeed. And what I worry about is by with these international ideas that they are going to impose something and impose at the end Israel to go back to the table and it will fail again, I think that the price of an additional failure could be immensely higher than the one that we're paying right now. We talk about a price, but there are those who say that the current security situation with the knifing attacks and the attacks like that is sort of a result of the frustration and the stalemate in negotiations. 
Well, there are no negotiations, and there's no question that things need to be done. I think that there are additional acts that could be done. There are voices within Israel, both within the government and certainly in the opposition at the moment, about steps that could be done that aren't about negotiating with somebody who's not willing to negotiate without preconditions. Um, at the end of the day, we do need to try and kind of separate as much as we can between the rhetoric and the words of the Palestinian Authority, of the Palestinian president, of the Palestinian mm -hmm. negotiator like Saab Barakat that we saw before, that their rhetoric can be so against us in so many ways. And at the end, between the fact that there are millions of people there who need a resolution, and it's a slippery slope, and we need to try to both work with them and at the same time be clear that we have conditions, that we have stands, that we're not willing to just give back. I'd like to say another word about the issue of the, the knivings, the stabbings, the deaths of what's been going mm -hmm. on. And I'm going to say something oh so unpopular. It's terrible. I live here. I live here. My husband, my three kids. It's not easy times. But you know what, Aria? We both lived through 2000 to 2005, and we stood strong, and we came out stronger. The Palestinians did not. And I think that we should continue to stand strong and do as we know how. We have our own um, capabilities. We are strong. Sadly, there is no way to eradicate terrorism completely. And in this sense, what we have to do is to have a stiff upper lip, if I may, in a very British sort of way. Uh, Mary Eisen, one final question. We have much time left, but you're constantly going around the world and trying to present Israel's positions. What's the response you hear the most? I think that what I hear the most is the gap, the gap in perceptions. I'll go again with the British with the mind the gap. There is a growing gap between the way that we, REA, view ourselves and the way the world views us. And I think that that gap is what really worries me. I think that that gap can be bridged in rhetoric. I think that that enormous gap when we wake up and we're looked upon from the outside as this horrific place and we wake up and look around and we think we're not like that at all, that is the thing that worries me the most in these very diverse audiences that I meet worldwide. Well, Reserve Colonel Mary Eisen, thanks so much for joining IBA today. A pleasure. Several days after he